Hello, this is the first of the two videos looking at the recently finished brilliant Chinese web drama, 隐秘的角落 The Bad Kids. In this video, I am going to talk about some of the interesting hidden details, and in the next video, I am going to compare the original novel and the screen adaptation. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where Jiang Qiang goes storytelling, shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. I've already filmed two hours and failed two times in the most weird ways. So this is my third attempt on the same day trying to film this video. <laughs> Maybe that's the、uh, mystery of this drama, the spirit of this creepy drama, trying to get. At me. I also realize if I put the content in one video, it's gonna get too long. So in this video, we're just gonna focus on some of the interesting hidden details of 隐秘的角落 and in the next one, which would be actually filmed right now, but I have to edit them into two. <sighs> now let's get straight into it. This drama has so many hidden details, so many interesting aspects, extra informations. So it's floating on China's internet now. Many people have looked at this drama with microscopic. Lens and trying to find out what is hidden there. Is there anything interesting worth digging out? And some of it does borderline、uh, over interpretation, but they are all very interesting. So I've collected some of the points、uh, that people have discovered. Also, some of my own interpretations. First, right at the beginning of this drama, I don't know if you guys noticed.、Uh, the thing is, if you don't read Chinese, you wouldn't be able to. When Yan Liang and Pu Pu got into this truck. And we're on their way to meet Zhu Chaoyang. The truck actually belongs to Zhu Yongping, Zhu Chaoyang's father. It says Yongping Shui Chan on the side. Yongping Seafood signaling to the audience. It is by fate. It is by design that the three kids would meet, and then causing all the dramatic story to happen later. This drama also reads very believable because it has added so much details that they never explained, and it's up to the audience to notice and get. By it. For example, at the very end of episode two, Zhu Jingjing fell out of the window and died. At that point, the building in Shangnianggong,、uh, the place where they had all those classes, had no extra protection on their corridors, on their railing system. But in a later episode, when you see Zhu Chaoyang and Zhang Dongsheng having a conversation by a classroom door, you will see now the corridor has been completely covered by this railing system. To prevent such things from happening again, this is not essential to the plot, and also never gets pointed out somehow in the storytelling. And it's really up to the audience's ability to capture that detail and go, "Wow, they have really thought through." Everything. This drama also uses all kinds of methods they can come up with to add extra information. For example, they use drama within drama. In both episode three and episode four, at Ye Chiming's home, also policeman Ye's home, Huan Zhu Ge Ge, the return of the Pearl Princess, the very classic Chinese drama, showed up twice at very interesting specific moments. In episode three, when Ye Chiming is falling asleep on sofa. The father turned off the television. At the moment, the television is running the second series of Huan Zhu Ge Ge. The particular scene is Zi Wei warning Xiao Yan to don't climb up so high; it's dangerous. That is referring to what has just happened in the drama's world when Zhu Jingjing fell out of the window at the end of episode two. In episode four, when Ye Chiming turned the television on, it is running the first series. Of Huan Zhu Ge Ge, where Ar Kang's family is basically complaining they shouldn't have let her into their life. Xiao Yan's messing it all up. This is so much like Zhu Chaoyang regretting letting Pu Pu and Yan Liang into his life and mess it all up. It shows the production really wants to make the story as layered as possible, and they're definitely having a lot of fun doing that. Like little Easter eggs buried everywhere that if you don't discover them doesn't affect anything, but if you do, the more the merrier. Then I want to specifically talk about a lot of the things related to the ending of the main characters, what their fate should be versus what has been shown on the screen. This is also the most highly debated point online. People all offer their different interpretations, and this drama definitely has laid in a lot of clues about that. In the original novel. Only Zhu Chaoyang survived till the end. The other two kids, both of them died. And in the drama's version, 
they are alive, but they are alive in very questionable ways. First, let's talk about Pu Pu. There's a deleted scene of Zhang Dongsheng that's not in the cut that you see online, but has been released as extra feature of this drama, kind of explained the fate of Pu Pu, which is she actually died. In an earlier episode, they were all in McDonald's having a meal, and Pu Pu really wanted all the toys that comes with the kid's meal, but she only has one, so she can only get one toy. Zhang Dongsheng promised her to come back later to eat again so that she can get all the other toys. In this deleted scene, it is Zhang Dongsheng sitting by himself. On the table, there are three kids' meal and three toys that Pu Pu didn't get the first time. He ate all the food and started to cry. Zhang Dongsheng is keeping his promise, but the girl is not there because she is dead. He didn't save her due to very obvious reasons. In the drama, you also see him trying to call ambulance and but kind of like stop there. And the drama cuts there, never really letting Poo Poo show up again in the drama. Although she gets brought up in other people's conversations and suggesting she survived, her brother is okay, blah, blah, blah. But that so much reads like, try to get past censorship. And the deleted scene kind of proves that because Zhang Dongsheng has mentioned in a conversation that never had any visual cues that runs at the end of an episode between him and his wife about wanting to have a daughter who would look exactly like Pu Pu. So you can definitely interpret Zhang Dongsheng, although he's a cold-blooded killer, really does like Pu Pu, really wants to view her as the daughter that he couldn't have. Then we talk about Yan Liang's fate. In the original novel, he died. In the drama's version, he is alive, but he's alive almost in that sixth sense way where nobody notices that he exists, together with the old policeman Lao Chen. When he broke into the assembly of the Zhu Chaoyang school, nobody noticed him. No one even reacted a little bit. And the light pours in, but the teacher on the podium, all the students, nobody noticed him. Only Zhu Chaoyang turned around and looked at him. They exchanged this really long and complicated and definitely not happy look. And then he turned around and walked out. I think with that visual language, it's clearly suggesting either Yan Liang is already dead, is a spirit, so nobody else can see him, or he's a figment of Zhu Chaoyang's imagination. Either way, he's not real. Also, he never really wore clean and white clothes throughout this drama until that point. And with that, him standing in the light and everybody in the shadow, you can totally interpret at the fact that he has moved on to the next world. Also, right after that, he whistled to the old policeman who is dancing in the square dance that he promised to his wife earlier he would never do. And nobody else in that dancing group turned around apart from him upon hearing the whistle from Yan Liang. So you can also interpret they can interact because they're both dead. <laughs> they're ghosts, they're spirits, and other people would not notice them. So they have this conversation about Pu Pu and Pu Pu's brother and everything is fine now. But if you accept that Pu Pu is already dead, then it kind of suggests these two are dead too, and they're living in their afterlife's world and talking about what's happening there rather than the reality. And if you think they are dead, then it kind of also proves Poo Poo is dead too. So I so believe that that would be the actual interpretation that the drama comes up with. On one hand, trying to pass censorship on the surface, but on the other hand, still suggesting what is the more cruel reality version of things. But the director in one interview did say they were just filming a normal scene between the old policeman and Yan Liang at the end. And there's totally, you know, not any of your over interpretations. Somehow I totally don't believe in that because it's just too obvious. When you listen to the music, when you look at the camera language and what they've done, I don't think I'm over interpreting. <laughs> I think they're saying that because they really don't want to officially admit that what they really want to tell in the story is this version. If you agree with the director and thinking what he said is for real, then it's me over interpreting it. But I'm having a lot of fun with that. So I'm going to go with my own version and you can definitely come up with your own version too. There's also a thing that um, I feel it may have actually led somewhere but didn't get paid off and made me question about what has happened during the production's process, which is Zhu Chaoyang has 
many scenes of him trying to learn how to hold his breath underwater. And while you are watching those episodes, you feel it's so clearly suggesting in the future this skill is gonna get paid off in some way. Maybe saving himself, maybe saving other people, maybe in a way more darker way as like a part of his master plan of doing something bad, but it never really happened. It doesn't feel like this drama's way of doing things. Everything you've seen previously, every little clue they've laid in, they've all kind of paid them off. And it's so obvious that he's learning that. There are so many shots of him emphasizing on him learning how to hold his breath and then somehow doesn't really work to anything till the end. I wish there could be a payoff and maybe we can go wild with our imagination and think what actually could have happened with that skill had it been written into the ending. Maybe the showdown between Zhang Dongsheng and Zhu Chaoyang. Oh, also forgot to mention, Dongsheng and Chaoyang in Chinese is so um, interesting. Dongsheng means rising the east. Chaoyang means morning sun. These two people are fated to meet and they are each other's mirrors. And in a way, Zhu Chaoyang is the second coming, is the heir of the terrible legacy of Zhang Dongsheng. This drama also shows there are a lot of things that they've done in post-production to swing the narrative to the censorship happy version. Zhang Dongsheng's last line spoken to Zhu Chaoyang before he gets shot and died on the boat. If you watch carefully, that is totally ADR'd by Qing Hao. While they were shooting it, he was speaking a totally different line. In the drama's released version, you hear him telling Zhu Chaoyang, 你可以相信童话. You can believe in fairy tale, which is a topic that gets constantly brought up in the drama's version about the car's life story, whether it is the fairy tale version or the truth version. Whereas if you slow it down and watch his mouth movement carefully, he actually said, 你还有机会. You still have a chance, you still have an opportunity. And that makes so much sense because this is the classical line for this role. He has spoken, do I still have an opportunity? Do I still have a chance? Twice in the drama previously, resulting in three people's death. So that line being spoken by Zhang Dongsheng at the very end of his life would make so much sense. It would also suggest before the police arrived on the scene, there is a conversation between Zhang Dongsheng and Zhu Chaoyang that is not filmed, not shown to the audience, where Zhu Chaoyang asked him, am I irredeemable now after what I've done? And do I still have a chance? At the end of Zhang Dongsheng's life, he told the kid, you do, you still have one. So it's kind of trying to pull in the narrative to a little bit more hopeful side of the storytelling, but also makes much more sense in terms of the drama's own logic. Definitely a much better line than you can believe in fairy tale. But obviously, if that um, line gets spoken, then it's suggesting the kid has a lot of problems and probably doesn't go through censorship again. So they've changed that. Last thing I want to add to this video is there is an interview between the actor Zhang Songwen who played Zhu Yongping and the film reviewer, where he explained in detail about what went through his character's mind during the uh, eating dessert together and the recorder between the father and the son scene. Because you do see him in the extra scene at the end of episode 11. When he listened to that recording at home, he noticed there is the noise of the zipper being opened and then closed again. The way that the actor explained that scene, I think is very interesting, which is initially, he doesn't believe that his son could do something that horrible, although his current wife is always suggesting that no, your son killed my daughter. He went out trying to get the recording so that he can play it back to the wife and say, now here is the evidence. You can see that my son has nothing to do with it. If you continue to harass him, I'm gonna get really angry and I'm not gonna forgive you. After he got home, when he listened back to the recording, he realized the zipper noise suggests the boy has found the recorder. And then when he think about what the kid has said to him afterwards, he started to feel a little bit alarmed. Because if Zhu Chaoyang actually had nothing to do with the death of Zhu Jingjing, and when he discovered that recorder, for a kid, the natural reaction would be accusing the father, would be getting really out of control and angry and saying, why are you doing this? Are you suspecting that I've done this? Blah, blah, blah. But what happened in reality is the kid closed the backpack and then start to say, 
all those very moving little things to make the father feel ashamed. So the actor's interpretation of that is after hearing that noise, he realized everything Zhu Chaoyang said to him afterwards is an act, which means there might be something that Zhu Chaoyang is hiding from him, that he really may have something to do with the death of Zhu Jingjing. But at the same time, he also feels super ashamed about what he has done to his son. He looked at the photo of his daughter and slapped himself. Because in the moment, he kind of has decided maybe there is something that Zhu Chaoyang did, but he will never really prove it anymore. And the kid got to this point because of his lack of love and care to this child. So he feels guilty towards Zhu Chaoyang. He also feels guilty towards Zhu Jingjing. He's like letting go of the daughter and kind of saying, sorry, I can only side with one child. I only have Zhu Chaoyang as my choice. And whatever is the truth behind the death of his daughter, he know he is responsible for what Zhu Chaoyang has become. The actor's interpretation is very thoughtful. And I think he definitely has managed to show that to the maximum that's possible in a totally silent scene with no line spoken. And after going through that thinking, he deleted the recording because he definitely couldn't show that to the wife. And it also reflects in the ending. Before he died, he told the kid to forget about what has happened and move on. These are some of the stuff that I've collected over the past two weeks regarding some of the very interesting hidden information, clues, and what could have happened with this drama and all kinds of crazy interpretations that people have. Have you noticed some of these things that I've mentioned? Do you have different ways of interpreting the story? As the actor Zhang Songwen has also mentioned in the interview, that everybody has their own right to interpret and every interpretation is valid. Whatever you see, you believe to be the truth is the truth of your particular version of the bad kids. At the end of this video, I do hope you've enjoyed it and not feeling you've wasted your however many minutes watching this video. And I'll see you in the next video talking about who there's so many differences between the original book of the bad kids and the drama adaptation. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you very soon. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.